How does this win against the Kansas City Chiefs impact the rest of the Ravens' season? What should the Ravens do with Alejandro Villanueva once Ronnie Stanley returns from injury? Why some Ravens fans are worried about Lamar Jackson getting hurt? These and many, many more questions on this episode of NFL Questions from subscribers. Yeah, this feels like a dream. YouTube, team keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to, and we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com, or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. Shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. Appreciate y'all. Love y'all. Thank you for supporting the channel that much extra. If you want to become a patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. If you don't want to, then don't go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. I love all of y'all. Let's keep this thing pushing. Y'all keep sending the fire questions as y'all always do. Now, again, moving forward, just know we won't always be able to answer all of them. So please do not take offense if we don't answer your question in an episode. I love y'all. I appreciate you. Thank you for always participating in this all the time. Let's do it. So first question came from my guy Gareth C. Man, appreciate you being a patron. He said, I ain't great, but hope you're having a great day. My question is, what do you think this win against Kansas City does for our season? I really think we can go to the Super Bowl. Am I crazy for thinking this? And shout out to Team Keep It Clean. Hope everybody is well. That's a really good question. Um, but I think it just it lets the Ravens know that they can rock with anybody. As long as they leave the mental stuff behind, leave the mental mistakes behind. And it also lets us know that the Ravens actually, this game, and I know we, we could always go through the coulda, woulda, shoulda, and da, da 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 but if Lamar doesn't throw the pick six, if Lamar doesn't throw the other interception, so you cut down on those turnovers, this could be a much different game. And the Ravens, they may have won, like, significantly like with a, a bigger lead not just one point but again we can't do that because it happened but it just shows like even the game last week Ravens they had the two turnovers Lamar had the two fumbles and they they went to overtime with the Raiders who showed against the Steelers hey they got a good defense they a good team so the Ravens it's it just showing that they just need to clean up the turnovers they got to clean up a couple things they got to be team keep it clean hey but they got to clean up a couple of things in this team again with all these injuries. This team, you take away a couple of them turnovers, this team can be something special. Despite all the injuries that they have, they can still rock with anybody. They just got to play their game, execute. Coaches got to do their thing. Everybody got to be on the same page. And they, they could be something special, man. Next question came from my boy Calm City 116 and appreciate you being a patron. He said, hope all is well. I think Chris Boyd did a great job taking over from Malik Harrison and did a lot better in coverage. I, I, I agree. And, uh, and it was a small sample size. It was very short. So I wish they would have made that adjustment a lot earlier, maybe even going into the second half. Because um, I, I understand you don't want to just pull somebody just because – they're not performing the best in the world because they were going up against one of the best in the world in Travis Kelsey. So you don't want to just pull them and be like, all right, Malik, you're done. But at the same time, with the game, with the implications that his coverage was having on uh, this game, it was important that they made a decision. Just wish they would have made it a little bit quicker. And he said, I think Williams still isn't getting enough carries. Lamar doesn't have to be the leading rusher. Thoughts? Um, it all just depends. It all depends. Now, with Tyson Williams, very glad that they stuck with him through everything. Um, and, and with the game, they, they, didn't, they didn't take him out the game. They didn't. They, it wasn't like against the Raiders where they were like, all right, second half, yeah, you're done. No, they didn't do that at all. And with Lamar, he just had to put the game on his back. That was that type of game. Now, against the Lions, I could see Tyson getting more carries um, than Lamar. But Lamar, in that game against the Chiefs, I think he was just like, and, and I mean, that's the way that the game was going, too. He he had to almost. Uh, he had to put the team on his back. He had to put the game on his back. And he won, I think he wanted to really make up for what he his mistakes from earlier, too, with the interceptions. And he did that. 
Next question came from my boy Greg from BMO. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope all is great. Crazy to think that the two plays Ravens missed, the two-point conversion, might have benefited the Ravens because if the two-point play pass to Hollywood didn't get called back from that penalty, which I don't agree with, uh, getting that two points, they kicked the extra point next time after Lamar's go-ahead touchdown with Mahomes then needing a touchdown rather than just a field goal. Then KC probably wouldn't have ran the ball and always wouldn't have forced a fumble then. Great game that was. Ooh, that, I, I like that. That's... um. Very interesting thinking right there because it's true. Yeah, that 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 changes everything. That's why we always say. I mean, it's been said before, but it just we always always got to bring out that point that football is a game of inches. Every play makes that much more of an impact. Every one. So good point. So my question is if and hopefully when Stanley comes back, should Villanueva be a backup? I think Villanueva is the second best offensive tackle on the team and would be in games. Uh, would be in game still. Uncertain about plays, but if Makari continues to look comfortable and okay at right tackle and Stanley returns healthy and looking back close to the Stanley, uh, we just used to see him. I just think that it might be best for our offensive line, whether or not Villanueva plays great in Stanley's absence and Makari continues to be solid at right tackle. Nothing against Villanueva. Glad he's here. And I think he played great on Sunday, but it's only been one game with Makari at right tackle. But what are your thoughts on this? And, um, hmm. So that that's a very interesting one, and, and one that uh, I've never seen. I haven't seen anybody ask a question like this. Um, that will be something, though. Uh, I don't think that happens, though, because it has only been – it's been two games for Villanueva. One's been at right tackle, brand-new position for him. Next has been at left tackle, old position for him. He performed – he did a great job at left tackle against the Chiefs. Did a bad job at right tackle against the Raiders, but it's only been one game. At each position. So we have not gotten to see consistency. Whether the consistency is going to be great or whether the consistency is going to be bad. We haven't seen consistency. So I, I do not think when Ronnie Stanley comes back, I do not think they're going to be like, all right, Villanueva, we pay you this, what, six million guarantee, whatever it was, to ride the bench. No, they're not going to do that. Now, if he continued to struggle, if they moved him back to right tackle when he came back and he continued to struggle, then eventually it would take a lot for the Ravens to bench him. Because Ravens don't do it, especially on the offensive line, they don't do that. It's you, you get you getting paid the big money, oh, they want you out there. They want you out there. It, it takes a lot, and it just takes me back to 2018, Orlando Brown Jr.'s rookie year, where he should have been a starter from jump. He should have been a starter from jump, but James Hurst was out there. James Hurst was their guy. He was their veteran, understandable, da da da, da. But he was struggling out there big time. It was looking like a big yikes. We were like, oh, Orlando, Orlando should be out there. He should be the one. I remember just watching him in preseason, but Ravens was like, nope. Mm -mm. But then James Hurst got hurt. Then Orlando Brown got put in there, and, and he never looked back. So I just um, I, I don't see them doing – I don't see them going with uh, Makari at right tackle instead of Villanueva when Ronnie Stanley comes back. But – I mean, you never know, but with Ravens, you, you probably know. Next question came from my guy Bates. He said, I ain't Graven been following you for the last three seasons, and it's been great. I appreciate all you do for us Ravens fans. Oh, I don't do nothing for nobody. I, I appreciate y'all, though, for watching, man. Uh, he said, so this past Sunday night game against the Chiefs, Wink was able to hold the AFC Championship scoreless in the fourth quarter, and that is something that during the game I did not realize. I think I was too busy stressing out, but I did not realize that, that he held them out of the end zone. Well, out of the end zone, no field goal, no nothing. For a whole fourth quarter, like these, ch that's crazy, man. Um, and he said, as a Ravens fan, this was music to my ears, I'm sure like many others. I found it very interesting that in the fourth quarter, Wink had zero blitzes. Hmm, interesting. Uh, there's a lot of speculation about how Wink will use our defensive backs, blitzing with Humphrey or Clark, while leaving guys like Oway McPhee and previously Judon to drop in his own coverage. Wink mainly threw out three and four man rushes in the fourth, and it ended up beautifully, as we all know. It allowed rookie uh, Adafi away to shine while leaving our veterans like Humphrey, Clark, and a Averitt to do what they do and hold it down. So my question is, do you think that Wink should cool it down on the technical defensive back blitzes? Even though we all know he loves them so much and starting to bring three uh, or four rushes, allowing our secondary to shine like they did against the two-time AFC champs. Thanks. Situational football. You can't go into every game being like, all right, Wink. Don't blitz anybody or don't. You cannot blitz any defensive backs. You just got to have them all in coverage. Patrick Mahomes is a different animal. <laughs> he is a different animal. And it's no offense to Jared Goff, of course, but Jared Goff and Patrick Mahomes are not the same. So I would expect them to blitz Jared Goff a bit more. Uh, the, the Lions, their team is not the Chiefs. And again, it's no offense to them, but that's what it is. 
So I, I do not think that the, the Ravens, you, you can't just go into every game with the same exact game plan. You can't you can't do that. You got to make uh, adjustments. You got to you got to cater to every team's their strengths, their weaknesses. Every team doesn't have the same offensive line. Every team doesn't have the same offensive coordinator, head coach, quarterback, receivers, run all that stuff. So I, I, I couldn't say, oh, yeah, Wink should just have all, everybody in the secondary just playing coverage. No, because not every team is the Chiefs. The Chiefs, you got to play the Chiefs like the Chiefs. You don't play the Lions like the Chiefs. You don't play the Broncos like the Chiefs. You don't play the Raiders like the Chiefs. You got to play every team exactly to who they are, to what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, and, and, and move forward there. So I, I couldn't just go into a game with the same mindset every single time. Next question came from my guy, Sam. I he said, hey, Engraven, love the videos. I'm a subscriber and tune into your vids the whole football season. You're doing a great job by covering nearly everything regarding the Ravens. Appreciate that, Sam. Thank you. He said, one concern I have for this season is Lamar getting injured with all these design runs Roman schemes up for him. There was a scramble last Monday against the Raiders where Lamar fell right on his head and neck. I don't know how he bounced up from that hit, but if the Ravens continue to use him as their number one rushing option, something is eventually going to happen and we might lose him for the season. Why are Greg Roman and Harbaugh not looking out for Lamar? If he's injured, the Ravens are finished and Lamar's long-term health could suffer. I'm concerned that Roman and Harbaugh are sacrificing Lamar's health to save their coaching careers and I don't feel that's right. What do you think? All right. So, with Lamar Jackson, is... He could he possibly be injured this year, or any year? Yes. Um, but could you say that for literally any football player? Yes. Now with Lamar Jackson, because I know a lot of people like to bring up, oh yes, he's he's a quarterback, but he runs more than any other quarterback. That's true. But with Lamar Jackson, the, how often do you ever see Lamar Jackson take a big hit? How often do you ever see Lamar Jackson just really straight up get whacked? Um, you don't, <laughs> you, you hardly ever see it. So yeah, he did take a, a little unfortunate fall against the Raiders on Monday. It happened, but it's a very rare occasion. So I wouldn't be fearful that, um, even in with the design runs, even with the design runs, that is something with Lamar. He 99.99% of the time he takes care of himself. He protects himself. He does not take many big hits at all. So I wouldn't be worried about it. Next question came from my guy Enonic. He said, Hey Graven, hope all is well with you and the family. Appreciate it, Enonic. That Raiders game has me shook. In previous seasons, Lamar's athleticism in our running game, primarily Gus Edwards, had our offensive line issues very hidden. Uh, Gus the bus punished the defense and Lamar broke ankles. We used the run to set up the pass. Now with no Gus or JK, the ridiculous number of guys on injury reserve, the Ravens running game is not as dangerous and the offensive line issues have been exposed. Injury reserve, uh, pass protection that wasn't solid, running lanes missing, etc. Uh, do you think our offensive weakness and the plan shift to more of a passing offense is putting Lamar in danger? Congrats on the huge success of the channel. Can't believe how much Team Keep It Clean has grown. Appreciate it. Um, no. Uh, and, and this, again, this is before the Chiefs game. So we see how things change. We see how... Uh, the offensive line change. We see how just a couple of shifts here and there, a couple of adjustments here and there, a couple of changes here and there, they can change an entire outlook. Now, we do and we have seen that this Ravens team, they're going to be passing a bit more this year. Um, they don't, you don't just add all these wide receivers. You don't just add these wide receiver coaches. You don't just do that for no reason, especially when the passing game was, it was a weakness. And not that they couldn't pass before, but they just needed to spice it up a little bit. Um, but you see how things can change so quickly from one week to the next. So now I'm not, I can't say that Lamar is exposed or in danger or anything like that. But now we just we want to see the consistency of the offense. We want to see it continue to move forward. And the good thing about the Raiders game and the Chiefs game is that the offense they haven't had these drives where they just where they just flat. They haven't been consistently flat where they just consistently don't move the ball at all. Yeah, some drives have stalled out. Not every drive has been a touchdown. Not every drive has been a field goal. But they've been moving the ball 
uh, more than they don't. So that's a good sign for their future. Next question came from my guy, Lewis H. He said, what's up, Engraving Love the Channel? Been following for a while and keep up the good work, brother. Appreciate it, Lewis. He said, I'm writing this email because we got to incorporate Devin Duvernay into this offense, if nothing else, for a trade value. I think the Ravens are crazy for not running Duvernay in the backfield like the Panthers did with Curtis Samuel. He has too much explosiveness and big playability for him to get his first non-special team touchdown on a fluke fumble recovery, especially with such a limited backfield. Now is a better time than any. What are your thoughts? Love you, man. Appreciate you. And keep it clean, brother, man. Appreciate it, Lou. And he said, a.k.a. Tony Paul Jan's number one fan. And I know you were hurting when he didn't make the team, man. So um, I'm not sure. What he, did they sign him to the practice squad? I don't think so, but I, I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, um, get Duvernay the ball. That that was his uh, the title of his email in all caps. Um, and yeah, like somebody brought out, they should use Duvernay at running back. But right now, I think it's one of those things where they may feel like if it's not broke, then don't fix it. But at the same time, Duvernay, he wouldn't break anything. Um, and, and he could just be a, a nice little change of pace, man. If you get him coming out of the backfield, and they, I think he's only caught two balls so far. Because um, Hollywood and Sammy Watkins, they, they've they been the wide receivers catching everything. Everything's been going to them. Um, so I don't know if it's a lack of him not getting open. I don't know if it's a lack of them just dialing up plays for him. Because um, he obviously is the, the special teams guy, so he gets the ball that way. But on offense, yeah, you could definitely uh, use him on some things. And I've been surprised, too. I've been surprised because they fooled me. I think it was in the Chiefs game where uh, Duvernay came in motion, and I was like, oh, jet sweep time. We bringing it back. They didn't give it to him. They just used him as a decoy. So I was like, oh, okay, Ravens, I see you. Uh, but I'm sure it's, it's still early, so everybody can't go off every game. Um, so let's just give it some time and see how they incorporate Duvernay uh, into the gameplay.